want the link. Remind me that I will forget. So <laughs> remind me. Send me an email. All right, so this is 1.3, which we now are going to specifically get to talking about linear functions because you've learned how to put things in graphing tool, what's a function, what's not a function. Now let's get to a specific type. In this entire class, we will talk about different types. This is the first one we will discuss. So in that first type, here is the first slide. Here's what we're going to talk about in the first slide. All right, we're going to identify which ones are linear. Find the x and y intercepts, the slope, how to graph them, the rate of change, there's one called the identity, and the constant function. That should not say identity, identity. It should just say identity and constant function. So I'm going to take that out. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. It looked like the same, it looked like the same baby, y'all. <laughs> identify the identity. Okay, there's one that's called the identity function and one that's called the constant function. So we'll talk about what those are. Then, of course, how to apply it to real life, finding marginal revenue and marginal cost. So here's where we'll begin. You've seen f of x before, correct? Yep. Okay, so that's not unfamiliar to you. So you will see an equation written in either form. It could be f of x equals ax plus b or y equals mx plus b. They are the exact same thing. Now, in the place of a and b, there will be numbers. Or in the place of the m and the b, there will be numbers. They are the same thing. So just don't, I just don't want you to get mixed up thinking, well, wait, why is that equation different? They're the same things written in two different ways. So that when you see them either way, you're okay. Okay? So here's one on the board here. It might be y equals 3x plus 5. Is it written in that format? Yeah. yeah. That's called the slope-intercept form of an equation. y equals mx plus b is called the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. Okay, so that's what this is. So whenever you see y equals mx plus b, that's what it's called. That's the actual mathematical name. The slope-intercept form of a linear equation is y equals mx plus b. A lot of times you're going to see your equations written like this, and a lot of times my math lab is going to ask you to write your equation like this. You okay? Could I write it with a fraction in it? Yes. Sure I can. It could be y equals two-thirds x minus 15. Is that in y intercept, y slope intercept form? Yes. Okay. All right. That's in the proper form. What if I have it written like this? Is that in slope and step form? No, no, it's not. So I just want to make sure you, this is called standard form. So if you see it in the X and the Y on the same side of the equal sign, it's called standard form. The homework is in some cases going to ask you to turn it into this form. So you got to go from it being this way to, be, to turn it into y equals mx plus b form. That means they want you to solve and get y by itself. Okay? I'm just giving you a sample of what you should expect to see for a standard equation. Here's a different one that you could see. What if they have 4y equals 6 plus 3x? Yes. No, it is. Not quite in y equals mx plus b form. It's slightly modified oh, it's Cause that, because this 4 is over here in front of this Y. So it's not quite in slope intercept form. So but you still can solve and get Y by itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, well, what if it's like this? Um, what did I mean to put on this side? Nope, I meant to put an equal sign here. 3X equals 5Y plus 16. No. Is it in slope intercept form? No. No, it's not. Could you put it in that right in the proper form? 
Yes, you can. You okay? Okay. All right, so in the next slide, it's just going to give you some interesting choices of looking at these. Determine whether each equation represents a linear function or not. And if, it's, if it is, we want to talk about the domain. Now, do we always have to use x and y? No. Nope. No. So in this particular case, we can kind of decide just by looking at it whether or not. So in the first one, instead of x and y, they use t and s. Is it in slope intercept form? In order for it to be, one letter has to be by itself over here on the left. Is it? Yes. It's, is it by itself over here on the left, one letter? Wait, which one are we looking at? Oh, 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 at the very top up here. Oh, no. Okay, so it's not written in the slope intercept form. Now, the question wants to know, is it linear? Now, here's how you tell if an equation is linear. One, there are no exponents. There's no variable on the bottom. And you have to end up with one letter by itself. Can you put one letter by itself? Okay, so you have three things. One variable should be by itself on one side of the equal sign, can have no exponents, and no variables on the bottom. Okay, in order for it to be linear, a linear function, what did we just say? Okay, so make sure I heard what y'all said. One variable has to be by itself. Okay, no exponents and no variables on the bottom. Okay, so if we can do that, then we can consider it a linear function. Alrighty, so let's look at that first one. Can we write the first one? Again, on the board, you have 0 equals 3t minus x plus 5. Can I make one of those letters by itself? Yes. All right, all right, so let's see. We got 0 equals 3t minus s plus 5. Hmm. It'll be easy to move the s to the other side. How should I do that? Add s to both sides. All righty. So now I have s is equal to what? 3t plus 5. 3t plus 5. Ah, is it in y equals mx plus b form? Yes. They just use an s and t. So that's linear, yes. Now, when it asks you about the domain, it just means what are all the numbers you could plug in? Any number in the world you want to? And what numbers might you get out as, as output? Any number in the world? So for this one, your domain is all real numbers, and your range is all real numbers. You can plug in any number in the world, and you get any number in the world out. Because it's asking you, if it is linear, what's the domain and range? All right, so we good with this? Domain, what we said domain was? Real numbers. All real numbers. All right, and range? All real numbers. So for linear functions, that's always linear? Well, let's see. Well, let's find, let's find out. Because we have only done one equation. All right, we have another equation to do. We've got y equals 9. Okay, well, is one letter by itself? Yes. yes. Okay. Are there any exponents? No. no. Okay, are there any variables on the bottom? No. Aha, uh -huh. is this linear? Yes. yes. It actually yes. is. Now, the question is, what in the world does it look like? What does it look like if you graph it? Because how can you, when, when we say something is linear, it has to look like a straight line, right? So we could go type this in Desmos and guess what it's going to look like? A straight line. If I type this in Desmos, what's it going to look like? What kind of straight line? Type it in for me, please. Type it in Desmos for me, please. What'd you get? Okay, here's what you do to graph this one. Now, no matter what number you plug in, what's y? Nine. If I plug in 0, y is Nine. 2, y is 3, Nine. 4. Nine. All right, there we go. So it don't matter what number you plug in for x, the y value is 9. So here, if I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I'm just trying to make sure 
Did I hit the button? Okay, I did hit it. I'm just trying to make sure I hit record. All right, so here, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here is nine. So one dance is two, three, four. What kind of line is this going to be? Anytime you have an equation that says y equals, it's a horizontal line. Every single time. If it says y equals 9, it's a horizontal line. Y equals 10, it's still another horizontal line. Y equals 15, it's a horizontal line. Y equals negative 2 is a horizontal line. You got it. But is it still linear? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Question. All righty. Now, over here, I've got the last one says xy is equal to 5, and I want to know if this one's linear. All right. Well, first of all, we got to get one letter by itself. We got to see if there's a variable on the bottom. And are there any exponents? No, no exponents. So it met that criteria. Now I got to figure out how to get one letter by itself. Okay, divide both sides by x. So I end up with y equals. Is it linear? No. no. Has a variable on the bottom. So when you simplify and divide both sides by x, you end up with a nonlinear equation. This, when the x is on the bottom or the variable is on the bottom, they always look like this graph. That's what that graph looks like when the x is on the bottom. That's in the, don't look like a line to me. That's the shape of that graph. So you got three things that you got to know in order to be tell me if it's linear or not. Can't have any exponents. No, variable can't be on the bottom. bottom. And one variable should be by itself. Okay. All right, you good? Okay. All righty, next part. No, she wants me to go to the next part. No. Okay. All righty, next part, going to the next graph. All righty, so here we figured it out. That we this talking about what we just figured out. So now we're going to go to the next slide. All right, so next slide wants us to be able to find the x and y intercepts algebraically. Algebraically means they want us to do it by hand. Can we do it graphically? Okay, well, let's find out what are the x and y intercepts. Wherever the graph touches the x and the y axis, wherever it touches it, intercepts it, that's where we want to find those points. Well, the easiest way to do it is just type it in there and we'll see where it touches, right? Exactly. <laughs> that's the easiest way to do it. But they're saying we want to find it algebraically. For testing purposes, I'm going to ask you to do it manually. So I need to show you how to do it, right? OK, of course, we need to know how to do it. So with that said, if we go on to the next slide, here's an equation. Well, look at that equation. Is it linear? Well, it's, well let me ask you, let me rephrase the question. Is it written in slope-intercept form? No. no, it's not. Is it linear, though? Well, what were the three things? No exponents. No, exponents. No, no variables on the bottom. Can I put Y by itself? Yes. yes, I can. So in this particular case, yes, this is linear. I just want to know where it touches the X or the Y axis. So how to do that, they've given us some steps. I'm going to add some steps to it. So in where it says find the Y intercept, here's what I'm going to add to it. Make x equal 0. To find the x, to find the y-intercept, make x equal to 0. What's the equation that they gave us? 4x minus 8y equals 16. So to find the y-intercept, I'm going to turn the x into a 0. So here I've got 4 times 0 minus 8y equals 16. But what's 4 times 0? 0. Alright, so that's gone. So now I've got negative 8 y equals 16. How do I get y by itself? Divide negative 8. Divide negative 8 on both, on both sides. So the negative 8's cancel out. Y, y equals? Two. So where does that line cross the y-axis? At negative 2. And sometimes they're going to ask you for the answer like that, or they might want you to write it as a point. How do you write negative 2 on the y-axis as a point? How do you know the zero goes right here? What number is it? Negative 2. 
number did you plug in for X? Zero. Aha. Uh -huh. So you plugged in X. It's got to be a zero comma negative two because you plugged the zero in for the X. All righty. Well, then how do we find the X intercept? So All righty. So make Y. Make Y equal to zero. So I'm going to do the same thing. Only this time, I'm going to plug in a zero for the y. So 8 times zero is how much? Zero. Okay, so that zero, that goes away. All right, so that leaves me with 4x equals 16. Divide both sides. Divide both sides by 4? Yes. X equals what? Four. All right, so where, it cross, where does it cross the x-axis at? Four. At the 4. Four. And what's that as a point? 4, zero. comma, zero. 4, comma, zero. That's done. That's the work that I would expect to see on your paper. Now, go type it in decimal so you can see it for yourself. So you can prove that. Go, no, no, type the equation in decimals. Not the points, just the equation. Once you typed in the decimals, did you see where it crossed the x and the y axis? You should have points there that you can actually click and click on the points and it will show you the exact ordered pairs that we just seen. So here's a good point. If you're like, wait, I want to go and see if I got the answer right. Let me go put it in decimals to see if I actually did it manually properly. It's a good way to check yourself. Okay, questions? All right, next part. All right, back to real life. <laughs> okay, here's the real life situation associated with this topic. Okay, a vehicle. Now, some of you have my slide, and you might see a little bit of altering because every time I go back and reread my slides, I decide I want to change something in it. So if you have a slide, you'll be like, it don't say that word. Then I changed it, but I just didn't send you the new one. It's a word or two someplace. In some places, I've deleted a slide. It's like, we don't need that slide, so I've deleted the slide. So if you're following me, I changed the word from business property to vehicle. All righty. A vehicle is purchased with a promise to pay. A $60,000 loan, so you bought the Escalade. All right. <laughs> then you're going you to pay them an extra, what, $16,500 in interest on the loan by making what? 60 monthly payments. How many years is that? Five. That's five years. So you in this for five years. And what is your monthly payment going to be? We're not going to buy that Escalade. So the payment is $12.75. That's somebody's house payment. If I keep living it, I don't know about paying that much more. <laughs> the amount of money called Y that's remaining to be paid on that six, not 60, but $76,500 loan is going to be reduced by $12.75 each month. Does that sound about right? Every time you make a payment, doesn't what you owe go down? Okay, so Y is how much you still owe, all righty? And $12.75 is your monthly payment. Now, it says, although the amount of money remaining to be paid changes every month, it can be modeled by this linear equation or linear function. All right, is it written in Y equals MX plus B form? Yes, slightly switched, but it is. Why do you think they wrote it that way? What you thinking? Why do you think they wrote it with the minus 1275? They want you to see that it's being subtracted every single month. So they're like, well, let's put it over here on this side, but it's still in this format. So it still looks like this. Instead of it being, it's written like that. You see that it's written with the M M X and the B is being switched. Okay, it's okay. This is perfectly legal. So you can switch them. So now the question is, let's say, where X is the number of monthly payments made, all right? So we want to find out using this graphing tool how many or how much money we still owe after we make a certain number of payments. All right, so we recognize that only integer values for X is going to be 0 to 60. Why is X only going to be 0 to 60? Okay, so X is my input, right? 
So input is months. And how many months did we say we're going to pay this off? So X going to be 0 to 60. Well, what's my Y axis going to be? Because what's the Y talking about? The amount of money you owe them. How much money you owe them? So what's you going to make your biggest Y value going to be? You can make it 77000 if you want. That's fine. All the way down to zero. So from zero to 77000 is what I would make that. So if you go type that in decimal story, please. Put the equation in and set your X and Y axis like you know it should be. Let's see if I it's a slide. No, I get oh, that's where it does it at. Okay. You got it typed in? Okay, did you set your x axis and the y axis? X axis is how many months you're going to pay for this vehicle to pay it off? Zero to 60. Did you get a line that look like look like this? Yes. Okay. Question. All right. Are we okay? You okay with seeing that? Should you expect this line to look like this? Why did you expect it to look like that? As you pay it off, you want this line to go down. Because when it gets to here, what happened? You have paid that baby off. You know, hopefully it don't have that many miles on it. By the time you paid it off. Okay, we're good? Okay, so now, can this apply to anything that you pay for on a monthly basis that you owe money that you got to pay off? Yeah. Absolutely. House payment, boat payment, lo student loans that you got to pay, you got monthly payment that you can pay it off. This same thing applies to anything that you owe that you're going to pay off over a period of time. Okay, what else can it apply to? Well, what about if you having some plumbing done at your house? Your AC went out, and now you got to get your AC fixed. Do they come out and fix it for free? No. Well, what about you need a car repair? So can I set that up as a linear function? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if you're getting some plumbing done at your house, how much does it cost to get plumbing done? $300. No. <laughs> okay, so now you gave me the final fee. <laughs> now I want to know, before they come to my, my house once, I need to know how much is your rate to just come to the house and tell me what my problem is? $75. So they might charge you a flat fee of, $75. might be $75 just to diagnose your problem. And then there is an hourly rate for them to fix the problem. What might that be? 125. 125 an hour. Well, plumbers make good money. <laughs> so if it's 125 per hour, there is your linear equation for you to determine what the cost might be for you to get plumbing work done. This works for what about? Okay, so this was plumbing. And what about if you're going to the mechanic shop to get your car done? Car Okay, there we go. So again, what's the flat fee that you get charged for with cars? You got to pay for the parts. Parts ain't free. So over here is parts. So here are my parts. Whatever the parts are going to cost. So well, I might be 350 for the part. Then what do you get charged for now? The labor. They have an hourly rate that you pay for your labor to get your car fixed. How much might that be? $100 per hour plus parts. Anything that you pay for by an hourly rate where there's a flat fee, you've created a linear equation all day, every day. You didn't even know you was doing math all this time. <laughs> it happens every day, all day. You just put in your calculator and figure out what it was and be like, just give them the money. <laughs> okay? All right, what else? Do, does this make sense now? You can see how it's relevant. 
The key is to making it relevant for so you can see that, okay, all right, all right, I get it now. All right, so here's the next slide. Can you do make it relevant? Last semester, I was like, I don't remember when you did none of this stuff ever again in life. There you go. Yeah, so now, you, now we're here. Make it it's got to be in order for you to see why we should even cover it. Okay? So, questions. In this particular case, they're actually going back and doing the X and Y intercept. The original equation for the vehicle loan happened to be, what was my original equation? Y equals... 76,000. Uh -huh. Okay, can I go back and do the X intercept and the Y intercept? Yeah. Yeah, what was I supposed to make? Well, let me ask, got them switched in the way they were originally. So when I wanted to find the Y intercept, and over here I wanted to find the X intercept. Okay, so they're showing us up here to do the X intercept. What did they make zero? They made the Y equals zero and solved and got. Well, they made, they made the y equal to zero. They got them switched. I originally had them up here differently when I showed you on the other screen. Other screen. So up here, they made the y equal to zero and solved and got x by itself. Yeah. Over on the other side, they made the... Y. Look over here, the last part, last column. They made the x equal to zero and solved and got... Y. Well, did you already see that in the equation that you saw? Didn't you see it in yours? Look at your Desmos. What was the x intercept? 60 comma 0. What was your y intercept? 0 comma 76,500. Those, we already saw those from the graph. This was just showing you, again, you could do it manually by plugging in a 0 for the x or a 0 for the y. And you'll get the same solution. So when we test, you want it to be broken down like that? Mm-hmm. You can check that, you mean at home when you're doing it at home? At home, you should always check it. For testing purposes, I'm going to expect you to do it manually, but you will, may not have access to the computer to check it. All right, so we've talked about all of that, so we're good with the, uh, all right, uh, all right, so we're good. We did, we talked about how we limited the X and the Y, because the X could only be 0 to 60, and the Y was 0 to 76,500. Uh, 76, There's the graph. Y'all got, you, you guys had that, right? Okay. There we go. All right, this next section, and I'm going to stop here because this actually stop, starts talking about the slope of the line, which you can actually see the slope of the line. So I'll finish the rest of this. We only got 14 slides. I'll finish the rest of 1.3 when you come back on Tuesday, and we will do 1.4. So we will finish Chapter 1 on Tuesday. What do I say your next test was, your first test was going to be? But right now, tentatively, those are tentative dates because I always like to make sure I get everything covered that I'm going to cover. And you will know well enough in advance. So when you come back on Tuesday, I'll tell you when your test actually will be. If we'll stick with the fifth or if I'll change it. Okay? Questions? Did anybody send me an email that you didn't get something back from me? I'm just trying to make sure because sometimes I get questions about, yeah, I sent you such and such. Did y'all send me anything that I didn't respond to? No? Okay. <laughs>